All right, welcome everybody. It's our, our fifth year celebratory anniversary live stream, and uh, we're so excited to have you here. There's still lots of people dialing in from all sorts of platforms, so we're going to give it a couple of um, minutes just to, to let everyone log on, um, and, and then I'll introduce everyone shortly. But thanks very much for, for everyone who, who's joining in from, from far and wide. I'm already seeing tons of comments um, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. So thanks and, and, and keep them coming in. Um, also, any questions, feel free to post them anytime. We're going to be, be taking notes of, of questions throughout the, the session. So, so pop them in now and we'll, we'll get to them and ask me anything a bit later. And um, yeah, hang in for, for a great uh, surprise documentary that we've been putting together to let you know a little bit more about our journey and, and how we've um, got to where we are. And, and you'll get to hear from, from some of the, the people who've made it all happen in the background. So, so keep the comments pouring in. We're, we're keen to tell you a bit more about Vela and, and to set the stage for the, the years ahead. And if you haven't, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see more of these types of videos in the future. We've got lots more con content coming through. So please keep subscribing. Join us on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. We've got lots of platforms. We've got Telegram chats. We've got um, yeah, tons of ways that we want to communicate with you. So you'll find all those links on our website and on our social channels. So please keep subscribing, liking, um, and, and put on your notifications for, for videos like this for the future. And I'll repeat it again, but we're going to have some spot prizes throughout the show. So um, most of them some are targeted at those who ask the best questions. So definitely um, put in some some questions uh, as, you, as you think of them and you stand a chance to, to win some, some, some prizes. Make sure we've also got the Valor app ready to go to and verified. All right, guys, we've got nearly 200 people, so I think I'm going to get started and I'll introduce myself so that um, all of you guys can get to know who I am. So my name is Blake. Um, I'm head of growth here at Valor. So I look after our business development, partnerships, and also our international expansion. And I'm really excited to host you this evening. Um, but you're not just going to hear from me. You're going to hear from a bunch of the critical role players at Valor. So I'll start by, by introducing our CEO and co-founder, Farza Masani. Hey, Blake. Hi, everybody. Lovely to be here. Looking forward to this evening. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Bazam. Next, um, we have another co-founder of Vela on the line. Um, that's Buddy Sudakaran. Thanks, Blake. Nice to be here. Great to see a good turnout. Awesome. Thanks, Buddy. And we also have Karabo Nemokonde, who's on the line. He's our, our Chief Compliance Officer. Hi, everybody. Uh, great to be here as well. Uh, nice to see everyone here. Awesome. Thanks, Karabs. And we also have Yaku, Yanku Volmorans, who's our, our VP of engineering, making sure that our, our technology gets built to the, the highest standard that we have. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be here. Great. And we've also got one of the real OGs of, of Vela, Bonolo Thomas, who makes sure that our, our, our clients and our customers get served to the, the highest standard that we possibly can. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Very excited to chat. Cool. Hey, Bonds. And, hey, Bonds. and then we also have Nick Wright, who's our, our head of legal, and make sure that we, we keep up, up to date with all the very vastly changing rules and regulations around the world. Keeping it on the straight and narrow. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Blake. Uh, great to be here. Very excited. Uh, very excited for this, um, this awesome uh, event. Awesome. Cool. So that's um, our, our, our panel for, for this evening. And um, yeah, we're super excited to get going. So without further ado, I'd like to um, get the team ready for our, our, our documentary that we've spent a lot of time putting together to let you know a little bit more about Valor and our journey.
poses anymore. How do people pose? Yeah. I think as a human race, the thing that really makes us tick is this aspect of love. And love can be airy-fairy. It actually goes down all the way to the atomic level of you know, electrons and protons being attracted to one another. What's made, it's, what, it's what makes us tick. My aspiration every day is to say, how can we put more love out there into the world? How can we help people in the world? How can we promote integration, unity? There was this big, uh, explosion of projects in crypto industry and uh, there was a huge amounts of uh, interest even in South Africa and really South Africa didn't have uh, very many choices the customers in South Africa didn't have many choices as to where to go to access these new assets that are, that are that were coming up within six months of working at the bank I already had the idea that you know we should probably leave the banking sector and actually start start a business in South Africa to provide the South African customers a choice. So I knew the, the founders from our previous jobs where we were all part of the same department. We were working together for almost two years. So as soon as the founders got going with Valor, they contacted me and said, can you join us? And yeah, within a few months, I was there. I actually know the co-founders or have worked uh, with some of them before. Uh, we were working at a bank uh, quite a few years ago, worked on the same team uh, and uh, built some of those relationships. I made the switch in my head you know, between what, where is crypto going, like what is industry about and, and started to see the possibilities and the opportunities and, uh, and then decided to, to go all in. And there I met Fazam while in the same bank and Fazam was very big on he was he was doing road shows across the bank talking about bitcoin and blockchain and how the new financial system is going to be got me very interested in in the whole crypto space i knew exactly what their mission was and it was an easy sell for me to come join valor and so the three co-founders and myself decided to head out on our own to see if we could build something that would help progress humanity, help build a financial system that recognizes the oneness of the human race. So there's really a great lofty aspiration in what we're trying to do, which is to try to help the world progress. Ultimately, our focus is really on the customer. The co-founders were onboarding a whole bunch of customers one day uh, to launch and realized that they couldn't do it by themselves. Uh, and so I got a random call from Fazan at like 9 p.m. Um, and that led to me joining. We went from four people that we, we were to uh, five, six, seven in, in the next couple of months. And it took us about nine months to build the first version of Bala. So it was like a small little company. And of course we had a whole bunch of customers and people, if you had hands to help, it was encouraged that you just come and help regardless of which department you're in. Yeah, there was so much work to be done with such a small team. And yeah, everyone was really focused. And the biggest thing is just getting out the door, you know, getting live the first time. And I remember December 6th, 2018, that's when we actually launched our website. And we didn't know if anybody was gonna be coming to the website or not. And we had about a thousand signups that day. And the euphoria that we had was just, wow, somebody's interested, you know, somebody's signing up. We especially needed a logo that had a very prominent V as the as the app, the logo mark, so that we could use the V as the app icon going forward. And the little lines in the V are meant to show up and down trends as you often get to see in crypto. At the heart of everything that Valor does is to create products that we want people to love and tell their friends and family about products that are in the financial sector, products that allow people to access financial instruments that they don't have access to otherwise, as well as products that are easy to use and create financial freedom. Ultimately, our focus is really on the customer. Like, how can we serve them such that they feel that they are, they're getting the best service in the financial space possible? It's both incredibly exciting and challenging. Um, 
exciting in the sense that we're breaking new boundaries. We are doing stuff that people have never done before in the financial space. Um, we're doing stuff that companies haven't done before in the financial space, that the world hasn't done before in the financial space, which is awesome. We were one of the, the first crypto exchanges to become an accountable institution under the FICA Act. We did this three years before we needed to. Um, because we wanted to protect our customers from a KYC angle. It's a different financial system. It's an equal opportunity financial system. And I love the fact that you can have control over what you do with your funds in a more decentralized way. While we've done that from a service perspective, as a compliance team, we were able to ensure that the correct controls were put in place so that we can serve clients in an ethical manner and in a risk-adverse manner as well, and with an extremely secure platform. So we've been very involved with, with trying to create a regulatory framework that is that bolsters investment in South Africa, but also protects customers um, adequately and, and makes South Africa a great place to do business for, for crypto firms. And so one of the main reasons we started Valor is to say, is this financial system good enough? Does it serve its purpose? So the world needs a system that recognizes that oneness of the universe. The world needs a system that safeguards the interests of all human beings, regardless of what type of book that they have that we call a passport, or whatever color that book is. It doesn't make a difference. Our mission is much higher than the success of Valor. Our mission is really the success and the promotion of the interests of our brothers and sisters around the world. But the challenges that uh, any crypto company is facing, uh, product-based company is facing, is, is customer experience and user experience. Uh, because most people think crypto is something very hard to understand. And my job, uh, along with my uh, team, is to figure out how to make these complicated products more accessible to customers. And I think Valor is such a nice bridge to bring them through to this new world that we're in. And I think that with the stuff that's coming down the line, we're going to allow even a starting point to be cheaper to do right now. I think we're focusing on pro customers and, and pro traders and really building out a platform that's not only uh, fantastic for retail customers, but something that other people can build on top of. There are products and possibilities that, that we might not even be able to conceive of, that other people can use Valor and build their own businesses and open up new opportunities just building on top of ours. First and foremost, we, we have been and are an exchange, but I think that not only is there potential to do more, but there's also an appetite. There's tons of features that I think are super exciting that are coming down the line. Things like staking, things like multi-chain um, deposits and withdrawals, which will make transaction fees you know, ridiculously cheaper uh, for our common user. All crypto users in South Africa got a better service, even those who are still with our competitors, you know, are now paying lower fees. And um, you know, we've been able to stimulate the market uh, not just in our own business, but across all our competitors as well. And I'm looking forward that we'll do something similar in other markets as well. We also think a lot about the integrity of information. We're dealing with people's money. So security is a big thing. Uh, and just the ease of use of the product is also a huge focus for us. Valor is a very um, values-driven culture. The core of it is, is, is unity. So everything that works towards unity is most welcome. And we're just one big happy family. It's built on trust, it's built on honesty, openness. Um, everyone is respected and valued. There's such a connection between Valor itself as an organization, their aims and goals, and then how they use the people that are there to kind of build that vision. We built such a fantastic product um, with, with amazing possibilities. And, and, and we've got a passionate customer base in South Africa. And imagine if we could take that to the rest of the world. Not only are we creating customer-centric products that are easy to use, that you don't really need customer support <laughs> to actually use, but also if you do need customer support, we're always there. So we, we pride ourselves in creating that experience, not just in the product, but also from a customer experience point of view. I'm very excited to see how far Valor is going to grow and the crypto industry in South Africa and Africa as a whole. Um, we're expanding into different territories, so I'm very excited to see where that goes and how many customers we can bring on and how many customers we can serve um, with our product. I'm also very proud of the fact that we've been ambitious. So um, today we only operate in South Africa, or we mostly operate in South Africa, obviously. But that hasn't stopped us from thinking big and wanting to 
um, actually be a global player. Like we don't want to just serve a small subset of the world. Um, we really want to take Valor to the whole world if we can. I think we're very lucky to have the people that have joined us still be on this, on this journey with Valor. First and foremost, I'm really proud of my team, but at the end of the day, when we have the team, the right team in place, then we can achieve great things. And we have achieved, whatever we have achieved is because, uh, because of the team that we've built. The fact that we're here today, you know, the team that's about 80 people uh, large, and the fact that we have customers that are using our platform, we have millions of transactions every single day that use our technology. And so it's a great accomplishment from the perspective of, of building something that is useful to people. And, and the fact that we have customers that use us on a daily basis, tens of thousands of customers, uh, that's a great sense of honor for us to be able to serve them um, and to provide something that's useful to their lives. Wow, that was awesome. Really, really enjoyed that. Thanks to the team who put that together. I hope you guys all um, really, really enjoyed hearing a little bit more about our, our, our journey. Um, but if you didn't hear everything you wanted to hear, um, we'll, we'll definitely have a chance to ask more questions. So, so keep them coming in as uh, into the chat. Um, there's definitely going to be some prizes for some questions later. What did you guys think of that? I think it was awesome. Um, I think it's... Um... For me personally, it's been amazing to see um, kind of the evolution of where we came from, which you know what we talked about, um, which is really didn't not knowing whether we would have a product that would take off. Um, I remember my dad asking me if you know how business was, was going, and I said, "Well, no, in a few weeks, it's launched. If anybody is is, is joining us, um, it's uh, it's been a great sense of joy and pride and gratitude. I think that we would all have." just for, to see where we've come from, which was just an idea to come to today, and then to see where we're going to be going in the future. So um, I'd love to hear from, from others, from Badi, from Nick, from, from Karaban, but maybe, maybe it started with Bonolo. Bonolo um, joined about three years ago and is in our support team. So Bones, let's hear a few of your thoughts. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's a very beautiful documentary. I really enjoyed going down memory lane. Um, what stood out for me is just the extent to which the company has grown. Um, it's still super inspiring because even today, after so many years, we have so much work to do um, in my department being support or in any other department. So, um, yeah, it's been a beautiful journey so far, and I'm, I'm really excited for the next um, few years to come. Yeah. Oh, awesome. From, I am unbelievably proud of the of the team that we've put together, and against all odds, you know, when when you think about the crypto space is evolving all the time, and there's also many challenges that the crypto industry face. And uh, these five years, uh, there hasn't been a day uh, that has gone by that's not exciting <laughs> with wins or uh, exciting because of some crisis, you know? So as an industry, we are facing uh, lots of crisis, but, uh, but what, uh, what is most heartwarming for me is that we have the highest standard when it comes to trust and building confidence in our customers. And we, we belabor a lot as a team to make decisions that are always right. Uh, and I think that that is what has, uh, um, made us survive this long and uh, and thrive in these five years of challenges. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, well, we're we're going to delve a bit deeper into into the journey and 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 cover a few more uh, nuggets from the past where where the team has 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 really strived to put together what what you know is valid today. 
So our, our next section is going to be a, a fireside chat, as they say, uh, or at least a virtual one. And uh, we're going to be, be having a conversation amongst uh, the, the panelists you, you see here today just about some of their, their favorite moments and, and thoughts reflecting on, on the previous five years. So, so maybe to just get us started, I'll, this one, this one we'll, we can start maybe with um, you, Prasam, and, and Buddy. But you know, what, what really gave you the courage to, to step away from, from the traditional finance world and, and comfortable jobs and, and start Valor? What, what was it that, that got you to take that, that first leap? Stupidity, I guess. <laughs> for some, you're on mute. <laughs> uh, buddy, speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> um, there, there definitely is a sense of, of not knowing. Um, I, I think from my side, I remember I was at the bank um, and I was I had, a, I had a seat by the window. I was looking out the window uh, one day and I was thinking to myself, I said, when I'm a little bit older, let's say when I'm 80, you know, I'm being paid very well by the bank. Uh, it's a pretty cushy job. Um, you know, I could stay here and do, you know, just continue in this path. But would I be proud of myself for doing all that I can do to kind of help the world, to promote a, a financial system that I think better serves humanity? And it was a resounding no for me. And so I thought it would be the easy path to stay, but can we do something else? And we had a great team uh, of people and, and a great idea that we wanted to do. Um, so for me, uh, as Barry says, it, it was, it, it is a bit silly in retrospect because you leave some uh, a great sense of comfort, but I'm very glad that we took that step uh, and at least tried, uh, which we'll always do um, to, to kind of start something new and to promote a financial system that we think is going to be much better for the future and for the, for the world. We're not there yet. Uh, the world's got a lot to do, but that's that's one of the main reasons that I I took the plunge. I think, as the, as they say, um, stay foolish and stay hungry. I think uh, my story was basically that you know, like as I said in the in the documentary, when we look at South Africa five years ago, not many choices there, and uh, when when we were working in the blockchain and crypto space. We had all the skills and all the know-how necessary to make a product. So why not, right? So, um, so the team was hungry. The team was foolish. And uh, I think uh, we, uh, we left, uh, left our cushy jobs and slogged away for many months before I got our first funding. Um, thankfully, the funding came and we built a really strong team. And um, it is also quite incredible to think that we were able to build a first version of our product in, in nine months. Um, that is also our testament to you know, the, the team thinking of you know, how do we also not only gain trust from our confidence, but also keep confidence from the investors that have placed trust in us. Because when we raised our first seed round of $1.5 million, we just had an idea. We didn't have a product. <laughs> so we had the idea, we had the team, we had the know-how, and we had the market. So, so we definitely wanted to keep the confidence of the investors, and that, that is true to, to, the, to this day. You know, Try and um, <clears throat> build a product and build, the, build all the necessary um, policies and procedures and practices that make sure that our trusted brand continue to be trusted, but at the same time, do the right thing uh, when it comes to our investors' funds. Yeah, awesome, awesome story, guys. Um, I, I actually remember when you, when, when you first launched, uh, I hadn't, wasn't part of the team then, but um, uh, I, I remember um, having some problems with some, some deposits that I, I'd made uh, into Vala sort of a few weeks in and... Um, uh, Fazam himself ended up uh, on the phone to me trying to, to, to sort things out. So I, I can imagine what it was like on the other end. It was definitely all hands on, on deck situation. Um, but yeah, he was, he was, Fazama was our lead support staff. I was the support staff. Uh, I was the assistant support staff at that time. <laughs> 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, well maybe, maybe um, looking a little bit further down the line, uh, I know just even in the short amount of time, you know, the last year and a half, two years that I've been been at Valor, things have grown massively in complexity and in, in, in the scope and scale of what we're doing, not only just from a, a product perspective, but from a regulatory compliance legal perspective and um, you know, operating now across multiple jurisdictions, multiple regulators uh, and rules. So, so maybe this one, um, Nick and Karabo, maybe you, you guys can maybe start, but what are some of the key lessons that you've learned as, as the business has changed in, in scope and scale, particularly as it relates to these tricky topics where you can't really get them wrong and, and you've got to be on top of things in, in the legal and, and compliance space? Cool. Nick, you want to go first? <laughs> cool. Happy to go. Happy to go. Um, you know, I think as a South African headquartered company and South African-based company, firstly, I think we're actually quite lucky. I think our regulators have been quite open to having a, a dialogue with us and a continuous dialogue. Um, and even in places where we have found ourselves having to, I mean, I don't know if educate is the right word, but I'd say rather make people aware of not who we are as a company, but also the product that we're offering and what actually crypto just means generally in the new financial world. We've always had a very, very reciprocal uh, uh, relationship with regulators and with, uh, with some of the traditional institutions as well. And I mean traditional institutions, I mean the banks. So I feel like, it, you know, at the beginning, it was a bit hard, but as time went by, it got easier and easier and easier because of the you know the openness that the traditional institutions and the regulators have towards crypto yeah just just to echo what uh Krabs was saying it um i think the south african regulators as as Krabs has said have been very open with us and we've worked hand in hand with them to get to uh, a point where we think that customers are going to be in a much safer environment and a much more, um, you know, regulated and protected environment. Uh, just on uh, something that uh, Farzam and Buddy said before, you know, being in a, uh, everybody here at Vela comes from uh, a relatively safe uh, job, you can call it that, and uh, in the topic of, of five years of courage, uh, we've all left those safe jobs to go into the crypto sector, which at, at the time that I joined at least was largely unregulated. And we've seen such a huge shift towards regulation and increased protection and increased security for customers. And Vela has always had a proactive view, a uh, proactive viewpoint of being as um, regulatory safe as possible and, and being proactive about our, about our compliance. Um, yeah, so it's. I think uh, I think good things are on the horizon from a regulatory uh, perspective. Awesome, thanks, Nick. Thanks, thanks, Krabs. Um, yeah, it's definitely um, been been an interesting shift uh, as the industry's matured. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, the the real um, machine behind everything that everyone sees in the UIs and the the amazing products that you, you see on the outside. We, we have um, fortunately got one of our um, the key, key people in our engineering efforts on the line. So I'd love to hear a little bit from, from Yanku as well, about how you, you, you've experienced leading an engineering team at Vela and, and what is it about um, Vela that um, makes us unique and, and, and how, how does it contribute to what we built, you know, given your experience in other places as well? Thanks, Blake. So the first thing I'd say is that uh, technically speaking, we've got about thirty people on our engineering team, which is which is fairly small for a for a for a product of you know of our caliber. Uh, the second thing is that we don't have thirty people uh, building our product. We have as many people in as is in Valor building our product, and which is which is really amazing. So I think you know one of the things that sets us apart is that we've got highly skilled, experienced people. Um, who are passionate about building a product. So we're all not, uh, not just builders of the product, but also also customers first. So we're, we're not just imagining what we're what we'd like to build for people out there. We kind of build it for ourselves in in some sense. And 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 if we like it and you know, believe that it's going to be a good thing, uh, that's what we that's what we do. And then and then that's what we ship. So 
what people see and experience out there has been has not just been built and shipped. It's been built. Uh, it's been tested. It's been uh, uh, tried and uh, truly tried and tested in house. Um, if 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 we do find issues out there, you know, it's it's one of those 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 things that tend to slip through a little bit because you know it's just one of those minor edge cases that people might not have seen. But I think um, you know the people being passionate about the thing that they're building, so believing in what they're building, I think is one of the key things that uh, you know, you know it's it's like um, people always say you you in 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 good cooking, you can you can taste the person's feelings and what they put into into that cooking. I kind of feel like that's uh, what it's like with our product. Like you, if you if you use it, if you're whether you're 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 coming in through the through the front end, um, you know, uh, looking around on our on our graphs and using the the pretty interface, which I can I can tell you have, have, has taken blood, sweat, and tears from a from a large group of people to to get just right. Uh, whether you're an API uh, person, so if you're building trading bots, if you're building your own platform, integrating with our API, our API is just as an important part of our user experience as, as anything else. So I think uh, I think putting putting ourselves into the thing that we build is a, is such a key ingredient. Um, yeah, and it's just it's just been amazing. It's it's amazing to be part of such a team that cares so much about the thing that they're building. Awesome, thanks, thanks, Shanku. Um, yeah, I, I loved your your metaphor about um, how you can taste the love and the passion in, in the cooking. It, it definitely, I can assure you that any, anything that that gets put in front of um, you guys in our, in our UI and our API has been battle tested by by everybody. We have um, even Yanku, I know, has built, spent many hours, and probably continues to spend many hours building trading bots to 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 test um the, the products that we're building so everyone is, is, is very invested in that so thanks for that yanku um yeah so so, so next i, I and i, I want to touch on on something that i think affects all of you who, who are dialing in the call in some way or form and, and that's um our touch points with our customers and it's definitely something that i think converted me to a valid customer um a few years ago and, and that's just how passionate and how amazing our, our customer support is and um, really one of the reasons why I, I, I was keen to, to work with Vala because, um, yeah, there, there's, there's, I think, a, a lot of terrible customer support out there. And I, and I think it's something that, that we've got right and has, has got us, um, got us to, to where we are. So I'd love to, to ask Bond just to, to share some of your favorite memories in the early days of, um, of running support teams and, and helping our customers with, with, with the problems that they've been having. And, and what is it that... Um, that, that that's kept you energized over all these years helping helping customers sure thing um so as um fazam explained he was um, in the support team in my time so imagine you can imagine how how i felt you know working so closely with the ceo of the whole company but that was definitely a blessing um for me because just the quality of my work and then um, the other support agents to come was literally pristine um, because the head honcho was in the building. Um, and before I joined Bella, I was actually working in support for another company. And one thing that I really enjoyed about when I moved to Bella was that we got so much positive feedback from customers, almost as though they were shook at how amazing our support was. And that essentially became something that fueled us in support. You know, we wanted to maintain um, our reputation that uh, the co-founders um, essentially paved for us. And I think that uh, I would like to say that we have managed to uh, maintain that up until now, because still today we constantly get beautiful feedback from customers telling us, wow, what a beautiful quick response, or thank you so much for taking the time to really understand me, or thank you for calling me. Um, so I think we just in support have a culture of really going above and beyond because we ourselves enjoy the product and we ourselves have experienced our fair share of terrible customer service. So um, it, we, we essentially pride ourselves on our excellence because we are super rare and um, we love our customers truly and honestly, you know, of course you get your bad apples, but because we have a beautiful, colorful, charismatic squad, we can just kind of dust the bad apples off and 
continue to serve because at the end of the day, we're also dealing with people's money, right? And money is super touchy, super sensitive, and we all understand that. And yeah, it's, it's been a very, very beautiful journey. And we in support aim to maintain um, the level of quality that we have, because again, it's a super nice feeling to get um, the beautiful feedback from customers. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Bonds. Um, let, me, let, let me add something to that, if I may, because um, I think Bonds embodies a lot of what we stand for within the support team. And also, it's not Bonds by herself. We've got, a, I think, 20 plus people within our support team at the moment. But we always talk about being kind, being helpful, and being quick. And someone like Bonds really encapsulates all, all of the encapsulates all of those qualities, because uh, anybody that's writing in needs to be served, right? And so, uh, actually, one one of the things that I'm very happy about reading through some of the comments is a lot of the people have said that they've never had to use support, which is fantastic because that's testament to the product. And in fact, if someone, if anybody does need to use our support team, then we, we need to improve on the product itself. Um, but obviously, there will be people that are writing in, but. Um, uh, we really try to make sure that we honor everybody's time that when they're writing in. And Bonds is just such a great, I mean, you guys can see it, it's such a great ambassador for uh, who we are in our support team. So thanks, Bonds, to you and the rest of the support team for everything you guys are doing. Awesome. Yeah, fully, fully agree for Zom. Um, and maybe we've got, got a bit of time for, for, for another um quick segue but i'd love to know what makes you guys excited for the future at valor i know we've spoken a lot about what's got us to, to where we are now but i think we've got so much ahead and so much work to do what what makes you guys excited to 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 wake up tomorrow and start working who's gonna go Shall I... yeah go for it for um there's a lot that excites us, I think, actually, at the moment. I think right now we're at a moment at Valor where um, we've done very well within the South African context, but we've now started to build product for an international audience. So I see some of the questions are asking about when futures, uh, when perpetuals. And so I'm very excited to say that we will be launching uh, perpetual futures at some point in the future. There's a few regulatory kind of uh, knots to tie and, and things of that nature. The product is actually ready. Um, and just a few tweaks here and there. But we're really hoping to provide a, a great service for an international audience. Um, and as some people may or may not know, that about 80% of crypto trading is not the spot market, which is what we currently offer, which is just buying and selling crypto or, or Bitcoin or Ethereum, but actually uh, some derivatives like perpetual futures, uh, which allows people to take get exposure to the price of Bitcoin without uh, buying the underlying. So that's one of the things that I'm very excited about. But um, I, I think beyond that is just we've got a relatively small team now that has a wonderful culture of, of service. And to kind of grow that and to serve more of humanity, I think is something that makes me tick. Uh, and I think is something that I share with many of our team members. So I think the future is very, very bright. And also, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everybody that supported us to get here because we couldn't have done this without you. And to serve you, to honor you, um you guys are what gets us up in the morning so thank you all for all of your support i think uh, from my perspective um south african market was uh, very kind to us um when i when i talk to our marketing team uh we look back and see how much marketing dollars we have spent in south africa is not much compared to many, many players in the industry. So we've, uh, we've reached more than half a million customers. Uh, most of them are currently in South Africa, maybe 80 to 90% of them in South Africa. And uh, that has been only because of the product. You know, people love the product. People like to talk about the product with, uh, and like to use our APIs and uh, the apps and, 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 but one of the key product that has been driving our success here is the spot trading. Um, but when you, when you think about going international and taking this product elsewhere, uh, there are definitely key products that we need to, uh, uh launch as Vala, uh, so that we, we do cater for those kinds of, uh, markets and the kinds of customers that we are after. 
So, so as Farzam was saying, we are currently busy building those products, uh, futures being one of them. And I think that is, that is what uh, is it's very exciting for me and for the rest of the team. So we're really looking forward to um, the next months uh, of when we launch these products. So I've been thinking it in this way. 2023 has been a year of um, sowing seeds because we, we've uh, trying to uh, get licenses in uh, jurisdictions where there are, that are crypto friendly. We are building products that are ready for international markets. And uh, I'm hoping these seeds uh, yield fruit in 2024. I think 2024 will be the year of the harvest. So that's also very exciting for me. Awesome. I think just, just to add to what, uh, what Buddy was saying, I, yeah, I'm so excited for what Val has been building, what the team has been working hard on, um, what Yanko and the team have been working hard on every day for the last few years. And I'm really excited about the products, but as Buddy touched on, I'm also really excited for our expansion globally. I'm excited um, that we are about, we've received initial approval from uh, Vara, who's, who's the, regula the regulator in Dubai, which is exciting, pushing our global expansion. We're in the process of licensing in Mauritius, um, as well as we're obtaining authorization in Europe. There's a lot of exciting things on the horizon for Val and, and becoming a more global exchange while keeping our roots in Africa and being strongly South African, uh, which is also exciting to me. One of the most exciting things to me, which I don't think we've touched on just yet, is that we are still so early in the cryptocurrency and um, the Bitcoin journey. And I think the more we grow, the more chance and the more... Uh, opportunity we have to build and educate people and regulators and educate everyone about this incredible uh, cryptocurrency um, innovation. And that's what I'm most excited about is seeing how we can educate and bring value and serve customers. And I think we've got a long, long way to go, but I'm excited to walk this journey. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for, for, for all of that, guys. Um, yeah, we, we're getting tons of cool comments in the chat, so please keep them coming. As a reminder, we'll have a couple of spot prizes for, for those who've asked good questions, so, so definitely keep um, asking all those things you want to know. Um, we'll, we'll start touching on them soon. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces and names in the, in the, in the chat, so, so thanks for all of your words of encouragement. Um, I, I, I appreciate that, and, and so does the team. So we're we're um, very close to um, our, our next section now, which is the ask me anything. So this is your opportunity to to get to to hear some answers to questions. I'm sure you've been been waiting to hear, and, and perhaps some questions that uh, you've had after watching our documentary. So the 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 first part, I'd like to just uh, maybe kick it off with the with the question that we've had in the chat, which is, um, let's start with. Um, one here. How do I put these up? I'll show it here. Okay. Um, here's one from Brenton. Thanks for the question, Brenton. Um, first of all, the question is, when is Vala Ventures coming out? So this eth eth ethos can be embodied in the next wave of African startups. So I'll, maybe this one's for you, Fazam. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so we have thought about it. Um, as, as most of you probably know, we, we've raised about $55 million to date. Um, the most recent round of $50 million was raised about just over one and a half years ago. Uh, the bulk of those funds are still available to Valor. Um, and so we've been very conservative so far, given the bear market and deploying those funds, although we've been expanding the team and doing some marketing, etc. Our feeling at this stage is that our focus is to be fully 100% on the exchange itself, making a, a, as good a product as we possibly can. Um, we've hopefully built the best product that's available in South Africa, and we have aspirations to do that on a worldwide level as well. And so we're really focusing on that. And so we're leaving at the moment the investment to the investors. We are not investors ourselves. Uh, we are builders. Uh, we are crypto exchange builders. And so that's where our focus is at the moment. In the future, it might change, but our, our resources right now are very much focused on just building. So um, 
So, so no Valor Ventures for, for the time being. All right, thanks. Uh, Although thanks, it, it does have a nice ring to the, to the, to the name, but not quite yet. <laughs> um, so there's another one there. Um, maybe uh, this one for you, buddy, um, on the name. Buddy, I think I'm... With the name. Um, it's been so long and I'm getting so old, I can't even remember now, for example. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we, did have a, we did have a different name, uh, when Secret Code, a name when we first started, when our first pitch deck uh, that I put together. Uh, but then I think it wasn't, um, I didn't have a ring to it. So then we were thinking going from, from first principles. So here we are um, trying to create an exchange where people are going to be exchanging value. So we were looking up all the etymology around what are the name, what, what is value. And there was one of the things was Baloro. And I think when uh, that kind of name kind of stuck for a few days and, and then then as we started thinking Vala, you know, I think Vala also, it means courage. And uh, all of us, all, all my co-founders, we have uh, very high ethical standards when it comes to running a business. Uh, so we are a values-based company. We are value exchange company. And uh, um, so, so it does, it did just make sense. And then we were starting to look for um, our domain name and obviously, Valor can be spelled with a O, with a O-U. Uh, so meh, most of the domains uh, with the, those uh, wordings were already taken. <laughs> so I think we ended up with Valor. And I think it, it came out uh, much stronger than if it, if it was uh, with the O, the, with the O-U and the differences there. So I think we, uh, we really mm, zeroed in on B-A-L-R, Valor. Although we've had our fair share of uh, butchering of our name, you know, the, the in fact, the <laughs> biggest search term uh, for uh, for Vala is VARL. Uh, so we also considered uh, acquiring a domain name VARL.com, <laughs> but we uh, we stayed away from that. But I think that's that's the little uh, story of how we came up with the name. Awesome, thanks, thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, so, so definitely um, uh, we've had some interesting spellings of the name over the years, but um, yeah, we're, we're really happy with it now. Um, so the, the next question is, all right, here we go. Um, I heard that you can pay, can pay with cryptocurrency. Can you tell us a bit more about this? So if you've been looking at the news or have seen some of the, the emails that we've sent out recently, you'll you'll know that you can now pay at Pick and Pay with Bella Pay. So that means anything that's available at a pick and pay store you can buy whether that's the clothing store or the grocery store um you can you can pay for your municipal bills or any of the bill payment options they've got with valid pay um at the moment with bitcoin and in in, in the near future we'll also uh, work to add support for for other currency types so how this works well i mean it's um it's not as uh, complicated as you might think but basically we have a partner called crypto convert that helps us um, settle pick and pay effectively in rands in the end. So we convert the Bitcoin to rands, um, or, or that's done by crypto convert, and they they settle pick and pay on on their own settlement cycle. So when you pay at the till, all of that happens in a few milliseconds. But um, yeah, we're, we're we're excited to to give a bit more use to to the folks um, who are using valid pay, and there's already been thousands of of payments made in the past, and we're hoping to. To add to that and 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 provide more real world goods and services that that people can use, um, and and we'll, we'll we'll be shortly adding more merchants that will also support uh, Valapay. So so keep keep posted and and keep watching the space. Uh, and there's definitely more to come with with Valapay in the future. Um, next question. What is the hardest thing that you've had to overcome on this journey? So maybe um, yeah, one 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 for you for Zom, and I'm also here keen to hear from um, from Nick and a few of the other folks because I think there might have been a few things. I think um, 
you know, we've been very lucky in many ways to be where we are right now. I think there's, you know, you, you can take some steps forward and you can try something new like we did with Valor. But I think there are also many external factors that either work for or against you. And we had a lot of, we've had a lot of luck to have kind of tailwinds behind us to, to help us in our journey. I think one of the, probably one of the, I remember early on before we had launched, um, we hadn't got any funding, secured any funding. And um, I didn't know if the product would be successful, if there would be any demand for it. There was already some incumbents uh, in the market. Um, and I had to give a speech. Maybe some of you were there at, at Block Starters. This was a, a place in, in Johannesburg where we had to give a speech to about 100 people to kind of sell the vision of what Valor was. And I remember I was actually feeling quite down that day because um, I think we had just been denied for some funding. Um, but I still had to kind of stand up and kind of share this vision that we had of what we were hoping to build. And then I share that story because I think in the journey of a startup, there's lots of ups and downs, your emotion, you have successes, you have crises. And I think uh, even till this day, I think probably the number one thing that I need to do, I think is solve problems. So problems continue to come up, challenges continue to come up. And so just to kind of be in that mind frame of, figuring out solutions and that were the world and life is you know will throw all sorts of things at you but how do you take it in stride and how do you kind of uh keep positive and, and keep keep building so i think that's been i think probably the hardest thing as a theme is just to remember that challenges will keep coming whatever you're doing and maybe that's a message to everybody that's listening is that whatever you're doing whether it's you know a startup your marriage your school your studies or whatever it is Life is all about crises and victories, and one follows the other. Um, so um, I anticipate we'll have many more challenges uh, ahead of us, and we're just going to keep trying to solve those challenges. So I think that's probably been the biggest thing. Awesome. awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Om. Um, there's another one, which is relating to another um, stream that you guys did a while ago. <laughs> Uh, this is from Carl, so thanks for, for that, Carl. Um, buddy, I think you're you're a big fan of the the halving body stream, so why don't you take this one? Yes, I've been thinking about it and planning for it. So we'll see you there next year, around April 2024. We'll have our next halving party. Looking forward to it. No hats this time, please, buddy. If anybody hasn't watched our halving party, search for it on YouTube. It's it's quite a spectacle. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the, uh, the past, the last halving was uh, in 2020, just uh, during COVID. So that's why we had that. Uh, everybody was uh, getting used to the virtual way of doing parties. So we started our Bitcoin halving party. Uh, we did we did it in May 2020. So April 2024 will be the next one. Be there, Carl. Awesome. Definitely, definitely uh, keep a lookout for that or we'll, we'll send an invite close to the time. Um, maybe this one's for, for you, Karabz and Nick. Um, what uh, restrictions do you anticipate for regulation? I, I assume um, this is with respect to South Africa, but maybe, um, yeah, a bit of a global slant on it as well, if you don't mind. Cool. I think uh, just to go sort of like back to what we're discussing, we're still in a very open dialogue with most of the with most of the regulations that have not been implemented as yet so therefore i'm very optimistic i'm hopeful that we will not experience um you know restrictions to a point where we would not be able to serve our clients uh, or serving our clients would become much harder and i think at any point where if any of those restrictions were to arise uh, like as we said before, I think we're still in a, in a space where we are still have allowed to have an open dialogue with the regulators and say, look, you know, if you have to implement this and you have to implement this, one, either it doesn't apply, or two, even if if you thought it would apply, this is essentially, it would go against, you know, the, sort of like the traditions and to Buddy's point, what actually really brings value to our clients. So as long as though that dialogue is open and we can still have those conversations, I don't foresee any real uh, uh, big restrictions as yet. Uh, Nick? Yeah, absolutely, Krebs. I, th I think you've hit the nail on the head. I, I think um, as long as, to my point earlier, as long as we keep... Uh, on educating each other, 
both us learning from the regulators and the regulators learning from us, then I think we will move towards a, a middle ground of being safe for customers as well as open to innovation. Um, and I don't, I think we must, I know, you know, some people think, oh, no, too much regulation is bad, but, you know, regulation protects customers. Um, it's important that places do, fa do have regulation to ensure that uh, customers are safe and, and customer funds are safe. Um, I see a lot of questions in the chat about, um, and it's probably a good time to just quickly address this for everyone, but I see a lot of uh, questions in the chat speaking about, you know, where, how do I know if I'm being scammed or not? Just a very important one, Valor will never offer you returns on your trading investment. So if you're saying, other than staking, if, you, if somebody's saying to you, hey, you're getting x percentage from your bitcoin uh you you you're more than likely being scammed or you are being scammed uh don't let anybody help you open your account or, or watch you type in your password password or open your account for you um there's a lot of uh scams out there that will try and use programs that look at your screen while you're signing on um so as soon and as soon as you have to pay anything into valid to unlock your funds you're being scammed so Important to note that um, scammers are out there, um, and regulation helps us helps us stop those things. Uh, so regulations are important. Awesome, thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, so there's there's a, a a couple more questions here. Um, oh, I see, as one's been put up, is there a story behind us not listing USD, uh, UST and Luna um, from 2021? Crazy, um, I think um, this one's for yeah. you. Let me take this. So yeah. So I think, first of all, again, Valor has been, uh, you know, we haven't been affected at all by any, like the USD stuff that went down, three arrows capital stuff that went down, FTX stuff that went down, Celsius, et cetera, for a number of reasons. Number one, we're very, very conservative with your money, with your funds. So your funds are fully segregated. Uh, they are not touched unless you want us to stake them for you, et cetera. And by the way, on staking, uh, what we do with staking is what's called blockchain staking. So we never lend any funds out to a third party because that party could default for whatever reason and then funds could be lost. So the staking that we do on Valor is blockchain staking where Valor holds on to the keys uh, of the funds of the customer and then earns the rewards of staking directly from the blockchain protocol, not from a third party. So one of the main reasons that we weren't uh, affected by any of the Celsius or the FTXs of the world, et cetera, is that your funds are your funds. Uh, they are they are custodied by us. Um, and so there was a question, are we a centralized or decentralized exchange? We're very much a centralized exchange. That means you do need to trust us. Uh, and if you don't trust us, then you shouldn't be holding any funds with Valor. And so uh, it's, it's we, we take that kind of, uh, that responsibility very seriously and we're very, very, very conservative with it. So we won't do anything with your funds unless you tell us to do it, anything with your funds. Otherwise, they're kept in cold storage, uh, some in warm storage, and then obviously some in hot wallets for, for liquidity in case you need to withdraw those funds. Um, I, I think it is important, like someone said, are, are, are funds safu or are funds safe? And I think it's always important to kind of be, be very transparent with everybody that you know, we invest a lot in our security. We invest in external security providers that will come and pen test our platform. They will do audits on us, et cetera. We have cybersecurity experts in-house as mentioned. We can do all of that and more, but the fact of the matter is that uh, there is no such thing as 100% security. And so we obviously, we invest in that, but there's no thing, such thing as 100% security at Valor or any exchange in the world and anywhere. And the reason I share that is that we are centralized. Um, and so if you feel that you can do a better job at holding your own funds, then by all means, you can do that. The wonderful thing about crypto is that you have that option to do that. Um, but as a centralized exchange, we have to invest a lot in, in, uh, in the custody of customers' assets. But it's really important that everybody understands and educates themselves about what the risks are in the crypto space. I'm very glad that Nick talked about the risks of scammers and things of that nature. We spend a lot of time combating the narrative out there that, you know, uh, 
a lot of people, which they are, are are engaging in scams because it's a new industry that not people, not many people, really fully understand. So, a really educate yourself well. Um, and coming back to the question about kind of avoiding the UST stuff, is that we always try to be as conservative as possible. Um, and so, we obviously could have listed UST, uh, and and there are many people that did li li uh, list UST, um, but. Please be careful in whatever assets you buy or what exchanges you use. Try to understand what the risks are and then make decisions according to your own risk appetite. Um, but we're very, very honored to be serving you. And, and also I, tell, I also tell people that for many people, holding your own coins is more risky than leaving on exchange because you could lose your keys and not understand exactly how that works. You can't reset your password. So there's, there's always risks and benefits to different things. So always try to understand what those risks and benefits in life are in general and then act accordingly. Anything else to add to that, guys, actually, on, 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 on some of the scandals that we've seen in the past, say, year and a half and, and how Valor has, has come out unscathed? Anything else to add? I think... One of the things that I've come to appreciate is just uh, how seriously we, we, we take the fact that our customers custody, custody their funds with us and the controls that we have in place and, and the facts that we, that we don't commingle funds and everything is kept uh, separate and, and segregated all the way. Um, you know, I, th I think it just, you know, if, if, if people had the ability to see on the inside, I, I think they would just uh, you know, appreciate how, how much trouble we, we actually go through to, to make sure that their funds are kept safe. I think the one, one, one small thing I will add is that we always talk about how we are a security company first and a crypto exchange later. Because anything we do, security at the forefront of our thinking, forefront of our design, without which we, we will never release uh, any of our products um, because like everybody has said we are running a exchange and, and we are the custodians of people's money uh, first of all uh, we never touch customer funds but also when it, it when it comes to our own funds our investors funds we're also very very ethical about how we spend that in a judicious way to to bring value to our customers be of value to our investors so yeah, so, and the last thing I would say is, uh, is that, you know, as from the very beginning when we started the business, um, sometimes we call each other out and say, saying, you know, it seems like you are high up on your ethical high horse, but uh, that is actually a good thing. All of us are our ethical high horse. <laughs> we want to always, always, we, we might be spending hours discussing a small detail, but we always want to do the right thing. And that, that also... Um, helps us stay on the right side of, of all of these crises that happens. Yeah. Um, awesome, guys. Thanks. That, that, that was um, yeah, a, a great way to wrap up. We're, we're running out of time, and, and thanks, everyone, who's, who's been um, on, on the line with us so far. But don't just leave just yet, because we are going to have some flash giveaways. So um, please do... Um, uh, put your your valid pay ID in the chat, and we're gonna we're gonna choose uh, ten random people uh, to give away some some USDT to, uh, which is one of the the latest uh, tokens we listed on 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 Vela. So pop your valid pay IDs. You can find that in your Vela app if you go to the pay menu, um, and and you look for your your, your pay ID. So drop that in the chat while we're wrapping up, and we'll, we'll choose ten people, and and, and give you a, a a token of our appreciation for for joining us and and celebrating our our fifth year anniversary. Um, yeah, maybe just in, in, in closing, um, first of all, thanks everyone to, to the panelists and everyone who put this together, um, behind the scenes. Um, it was really great to, to be able to celebrate this and, and I'm so proud to be a part of this, this journey with, with you all. I know we've still got a lot to do and it's great to celebrate the, the past, but I'm, I'm even more excited for the future and, and what we're going to be doing. Um, and, um, yep. and Bleaky, yeah. can I just add something as well? Because I mean, there are a few of us that are actually here in front of the audience but you know we represent you know 80 plus people many of whom are watching today so a very big thanks to all of them uh particularly the, the, those are the people that are really 
ensuring that all of you that are using Valor are served well through the product, served well through our support desk, our, our, your, your accounts and your funds are secure. So there's a tremendous amount of, of effort and, and dedication that goes on. So I just want to give a big shout out to everybody that's watching, that's part of the team, a big shout out to our customers for supporting us. Um, we're really, really honored to, to be able to have the privilege to, to serve you. So thanks for joining us today. And, and I hope you hope this gave a little bit of a sense of kind of who we are behind the scenes. Um, uh, please be, be assured that we will always continue to do our very best to serve you as best as we can. So thank you so, so much. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. And those who didn't get your your, your questions answered, um, if there's anything super important and, and you want an answer, please pop it through to help at Vela.com. Um, and, and our, our team at the, uh, in, the, in the background will we'll get you an answer over, over time. But yeah, sorry we couldn't get to everyone, but thank you so much for all the questions and all your interactions. The comments have been amazing and really enjoyed being with you here this evening. So, so thanks a lot. And we'll, we'll wrap up shortly. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. Cool. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you so much. Nick and Nick and Yanki, before we get stripped off the screen by Shannon in the back, any last comments? Go for it, Yanks. Uh Yeah, this was fun. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. And as Blake says, just drop, drop a, any questions that you have to help at Vela.com. And don't forget to drop your Vela Pay ID in the comments. Um, there we go. And awesome. like and subscribe and click, <laughs> yeah. the, click the bell Smash button. The like button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Vela is on the marketing team. Yeah. Thanks all. Bye bye. Thanks, Shall everyone. Wrap it up now.